Going to college is an exciting time in the lives of young people, but for some students, depression gets in the way. Whether it's their first brush with the disorder or not, College can act as a catalyst for the onset of depression in many young people. And on their own for the first time, the timing couldn't be worse. Children can be depressed at younger ages, but the older they are, the higher the prevalence rates. Experts consider risk factors for depression to be a combination of genes and environment. Some kids might be genetically at risk for developing depression, but they will be fine until they experience an environmental stressor that flips the switch and sends them into depression. It makes sense that college could be that stressor. The stress of a new environment. Leaving home is a big transition for kids. And while away at college, suddenly kids find themselves in a new environment without any of the structure or supports, academic or emotional, they've always been able to rely on. Kids might have complex feelings about how they should be relating to the people back home, or think that they don't fit in with their new peers. Independent for the first time, they might also be embracing the college lifestyle. Erratic sleeping habits, non-nutritious or non-existent meals, and an unstructured schedule, especially if they're skipping classes, that can leave them feeling unglued. College is also something of a pressure cooker for depression, because the more you're surrounded by people who are depressed, the more likely you are to become depressed yourself. Depression signs to look out for. Detecting depression in college students who are away from home can be difficult. Some depression symptoms, like uncharacteristic sadness and crying, are straightforward, but others, like trouble concentrating and irritability, are less so. People with depression also tend to isolate themselves and take less pleasure in things that they used to enjoy. So if you hear that your child is spending too much time alone in their room or quitting the things that used to make them happy, they might be depressed. Worrisome alcohol and substance use can also be a sign. For many kids, things come to a head towards the end of the semester when academic demands become more pressing and seem insurmountable. College is a time to become more adult and independent, and parents should respect this and give kids the space they need to grow. But if you notice any changes in their mood or behavior that worry you, don't ignore them. Their fellow students and new professors don't know them as well as you do, so they might not recognize when there is a problem. Getting help. Treating depression when kids are away at college can be complicated. Colleges have health centers on campus with professionals who can help, but convincing kids to go there can be difficult. For kids who already struggle with depression, they should contact the mental health professionals on campus before attending their college. Having already made that initial contact and already knowing who and what to expect makes asking for help easier. If your child hasn't used the health center yet, but seems to need support, let them know that they can help. Kids are often reluctant to take the first step, so be supportive and encouraging. Parents may also be able to schedule an appointment, but because of confidentiality laws, you shouldn't expect the school to give you information about your child's health unless they have given them their authorization to do so. Keep in mind that health centers typically limit the number of sessions students can receive, but they will make referrals to other professionals located nearby. If your child has depression, they will likely need ongoing treatment, either for therapy or for monitoring medication or both. Traveling back home for healthcare often isn't realistic, and receiving consistent treatment is important, so it's good to find a provider your child can rely on in the community not a good time to stop medication. Finally, it isn't uncommon for kids who have already been diagnosed with depression to want to stop taking medication before going to college so they can get a fresh start. This can be very dangerous if unsupervised. With depression, there's a risk of relapse. So if your child wants to stop taking their medication, the dosage should be lowered very gradually and they should be closely monitored by their doctor throughout the whole process. Going cold turkey is never a good idea. With the right support systems, students can adjust to their new environment and start to feel better. Starting college is exciting, but it's also stressful. For some kids, so many changes and new responsibilities all at once can trigger depression. The lack of structure and support also makes college an especially difficult time for kids to cope with depression. If you notice big changes in your child's mood or behavior, check in with them. Some signs of depression, like crying or feeling sad a lot, might be obvious. 
but others, like being irritable or having a hard time concentrating, are more subtle. If you hear that your child is spending a lot of time alone or quitting things they used to love, they might be depressed. Using drugs or alcohol a lot can also be a sign. If your child has already been dealing with depression before college, it's a good idea for them to get in touch with the school's counseling center ahead of time. That way, they know who to talk to if they need support. And if your child has been taking medication, the transition to college is a bad time to stop. If your child wants to stop, it's best to wait until they've settled in and the stress of the first year has passed. Then their doctor can help them stop the medication safely. If your child is dealing with depression for the first time, encourage them to get help at school. Many colleges offer a limited number of free therapy sessions to students. They can also refer your child to a local therapist for continuing care. It's also important for kids to maintain a regular schedule, get plenty of sleep, and eat nutritious meals. With the right support system, students can adjust to their new environment and start to feel better. Thanks for joining me for this video. I'm Dr. David Friedlander, a clinical psychologist at the Child Mind Institute. To learn more about depression and mood disorders, visit childmind.org forward slash mood support. There, you'll find everything you need to know about our cutting edge tailored treatment services for children and adolescents suffering from mood disorders, plus hundreds of articles and guides to help you support children who are struggling with mental health, behavior, or learning challenges.